Hey everybody, this is Coastal Revolution. I'm here today with a very special brother here, Omar. How are you? I'm very good, Habib. Yeah. How are you? Thank you for having me on Collector's Perspective. Ah, no, no. And I'm very excited because I want to get into your collection okay. as well. So <laughs> you are always interviewing people. I want to know what takes your brains, what awesome. takes your heart. Yeah, I can't wait to share. So uh, basically, Omar is going to interview me in my collection and I'm going to get down and dirty with his collection, right? Amazing. So uh, shall we? Shall Absolutely. We start? Yeah. Why don't we start with your latest purchase, which yep. is a very dear watch to your mm -hmm. heart, the Bulgari yes. Optofinissimo Sajima. Mm -hmm. So basically, this is uh, quite a significant watch to me mm -hmm. because uh, this is uh, I purchased this um, watch basically um, during the period where I started um, uh, with the, the Octo Club, the Octo Symposium. It's a club that we love uh, and we want to share this, um, uh, the admiration and, um, and share the joy and love for the Octo Finissimos, right? In the beginning, I didn't really like this watch because it's too shiny, yeah, more than I the get normal it. Octo Finissimo yeah. standard. But, you know, I was convinced by, uh, you know, the founder of the Octo Club, nope. <laughs> Apparently, he's also incidentally the first guest from my yeah. this perspective. Yeah. And, and a very good friend of mine, I've known him for oh, quite awesome. some time. Oro Montanari as well basically also Come on. Uh, plays a part in terms One of One of the legends in the watch yeah. industry. Yeah, and, and yeah, I'm happy to have this, you know, uh, if I say that um, there's one Sejima Limited Edition, I'll keep this definitely the one. Yeah. Mm. That said, we'll go into um, uh, Umar's uh, collection, one brand that he loves with his all, with all his heart. Uh, we're going to talk about, of course, the MBNF. Right? Yes. So we have uh, MBNF, uh, um, Legacy Machine, Perpetual Calendar. Yep. Uh, tell me more about this, man. So this is the LMP Evo version, and this watch has been built and made for you to wear as a daily beater. Mm -hmm. So this is a watch for life. People don't get uh, how important it is that this watch should be worn. Mm. Don't be scared of the perpetual calendar. It is built to be sustainable. And yes, this watch makes perfect sense for me. I love the complication and I am very much fond of the person that runs this company, mm -hmm. uh, Max Blusser, which you met recently. Yeah, and he's amazing. Yeah. You can understand what yeah. a great human being he, he is. is. Yeah, he is. He's so the brand is amazing. The person leading it is amazing. Plus, we cannot forget the watchmaker, Stephen McDonald, of course. who I yeah. think is a genius. He For is. somebody who is not a watchmaker by trade, taught himself how to do mm -hmm. watches, which is brilliant. Came up with a new way to calculate a perpetual yeah, calendar. Yeah, it's amazing, it's amazing. So yeah. yeah, he came up with this microprocessor that's gonna give the indication that every month would stop on 28 mm -hmm. and the extra addition will be added accordingly to the number of length of each month, oh. which is brilliant, it's, you know? Yeah, it's, it's unbreakable, brilliant. it's unfaulty. You can do whatever you want with this watch. And for me, it brings a big smile. So I mean, every time, I think one thing I will point out is uh, Stephen. You know, <laughs> he he is an engineer by trade. Yeah. But he looks like a watchmaker. Yeah. <laughs> you know, to, to come up with this is is, is is really incredible. I mean, honestly, it's really incredible. And of course, we gotta give props to the person that founded the brand. Max, of course, you know? definitely. So you've heard a lot of stories about how this came together and the relationship between Max and Stephen. And I mean, such such a connection is so powerful that. I felt I needed to have this watch. Uh, while talking about MBNF, we got to go for the matte <laughs> one, right? <laughs> right. So it will be this, this piece here. So um, this is the uh, matte editions matte one in green, which yeah. incidentally was just launched in September, right? Yes. So tell me about this, man, Omar. So first of all, let me say that we as tribe members, uh, we get the allocation, so we don't have to participate in the mm -hmm. raffle. So I'm sorry for everybody who tried to get one and couldn't. More, 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 <laughs> more of these are coming. Hey, me, me included, man. I, I couldn't get it, but you know, it is so, what it is. So, yeah. and, and coincidentally, this was supposed to be the first map. Yes. But then at, yes, the, at that time, there's a lot of greens mm -hmm. being done. So Matt said, okay, let's twist and let's do it blue mm -hmm. instead. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's my favorite color. This makes sense. It's a beautiful watch. I love to wear it. It's. It's a statement piece, right? Yeah, and at the beginning, is. when the first mat came out, that blue one, the tribe watch, mm -hmm. it broke the internet. It, it was a crazy yeah, watch. It, did, it, did. It's yeah. a, it was a watch that you would wear on your wrist, and honestly, like you would flex about it, like, hey, <laughs> honestly, I have... yeah, it's the, the ultimate conversation piece. Yeah, as well, absolutely. Right? Yeah. So, and then I, I love the idea of it. This is a way to say thank you first and foremost, and this is a way also to give people access to the brand. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. not an MBNF. It's a mad but you're getting the identity, you're getting the vision, so you're getting, in a way, the sense of what is yep. Max mm -hmm. in an affordable watch. 
I would say one of the best projects that Max actually envisioned, right. which I yeah. think is amazing to bring that in, you know, to the accessible price point. And I own the red one as well, you know, so yeah. I, I share the joy as well yeah. to, to have something like this on the wrist, you know, it's, it's, it's just enjoyable, wonderful. True. On the same line, uh, we're going to talk about this as well. This is the uh, Boulevard Computron, right? Yes. So it has a very special story. Yes. It's that kind of link to, you know, the Max himself. Absolutely. So maybe you can share a little bit more about this. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm very drawn to skeleton watches. I like to look at the dial and not see the movement cover. Yep. For me, I love to look at the intricate uh, synergy and how everything is coming together. I understand. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and the flying balance wheel is something, you know, that is mesmerizing. Mm -hmm. So when this first came out, I was like, wow, skeleton digital watch. And yeah. you can see the uh, circuit board. I mean, how cool this was. Extremely cool, yeah. But it was extremely difficult to get because it was in the era of the NFT. And you had to purchase the NFT. You have to go through a certain crypto wallet. Too complicated oh, really? to get one. Oh, I, didn't know that. I never managed to get one. So one of my conversations with Max, and I'm, 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 we talk about watches, we talk about his collection and his perspective. And I remember he told me that he collects driver's watches from mm -hmm. the 70s, because his, his main love as well is cars. He was meant to be a car designer. Yeah, yeah, that's and true, then yeah. fate had mm -hmm. it that he was a watch designer. And funny enough, we talked about this one and he had one. And I'm like, Max, how did you get it? So he tells me the story of how he gets it. And I'm like, damn, I want one. He's like, you know, I know somebody who has one <laughs> who would let go of it. And for me, it made sense, you know, because also wow. I, I like to buy watches that are in common with people I admire mm -hmm. and respect. For me, this is important. Yep. Not just buying the watch from the brand I respect. I take my philosophy and my love for this hobby even further. Wow. And I do that and I love to either have the same watch as an idol, as somebody I respect, or buy a watch from somebody I respect. Or funny enough that sometimes I get gifted a watch from somebody I respect, wow. which is amazing. That's amazing, man. Can't see anything, but when you press the button, here, here you go. The time display is there and you can yeah. set it, you know? You can set it, yes. It's crazy. It gives you fun. time, day, date. Everything that, you zone, everything that you need. Everything that you need. Your basic cool. uh, necessity, necessary information. Congratulations, man. Thank you. This is really cool. Thank you so much. Right. Why don't we move to something that you are very, very passionate about, vintage. <laughs> yes. And let's start mm -hmm. with a couple of watches here in front of me. Mm -hmm. You have one of the nicest vintage watches in my personal opinion, which is the Universal Genève right. Paul Router. Obviously, this is a Janta design. Yes. Why don't you tell us Yeah. So this is more a, about it? Uh, Universal Jeanette Pole Router from 1958. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, it, is, uh, it is designed by Jerry Gentle when he was 23. I don't know how many people actually know that, but uh, it, it is true. So this, um, I mean, the design is iconic, you know, uh, the Pole Router is basically, it's um, U Universal Geneva's uh, sports watch in the history of it. You know, I'm gonna, not going to dwell into it, but the history of it is pretty amazing as well. This piece itself, um, I found it maybe a couple of, uh, um, actually not really that long ago, I bought it from a vintage collector. Mm. And uh, who happens to be a dear friend of mine as well, so I know that he always has this watch, and you know I became. Makes a difference when you buy from a friend. Honestly, right? it's true. It's true. And that being said, that this watch is in the possession of uh, a friend yes. that we know. That we of know. Of course, it will be our video director. Is yes. Hi, bro. Hey. <laughs> and now this is one of your favorite watches, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Why don't um, we move to another impressive yes, universe yes, Genève, yes. which is the Tri Compact? Yeah. And to me, this watch is aesthetically so pleasing to the yeah. eye. And honestly, the size is so small, but everything is so clear on it. Yeah, I mean, it's one of my favorite watches. Um, it's pretty much a little bit like a, a um, I would call it a friendship watch. Yeah. Because I think that, you know, um, these watches are acquired or they are sold to people that you care about and, you know, people that you love. And this, this happens to be one of them, you know, this, is, this happens to come from a dear friend of mine. Uh, which is uh, really important to me in the revolution, you know, being in revolution, the journey in revolution. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, this is a Universal Genève tri um chronograph, triple date calendar. Um, it's in great condition, it's 34.5 mm, you know, uh, it does have the in-house Universal Genève 481 caliber column wheel chronograph. It, it's a watch from the 40s, you know, my favorite era is the 40s and 50s, you know, yeah. so this is bang in the middle. and. I would say that this is one of uh, Universal Genève's most iconic model as well. I love that there's this connection, you yep. know, like mm -hmm. you love to buy something from yep. friends or with friends and mm -hmm. I do the same. And I think this is the most satisfying part it of is, this journey. Is, it, Couldn't agree and more. And so I think we should talk about the last watch as well because it's also part of the friendship. 
uh, yeah. friendship watch, which, uh, which is the 5508. Okay. So why don't we get into it? Yeah. I was gonna try to save this for later. Very mesmerizing piece. Yeah. Why don't uh, we go into this yeah. 5508? So I think it's only right because uh, if you talk Let's about go. friendship watch, so this is actually a James Bond small crown. Uh, it's a Submariner reference 5508, no crown guards. You know, a hundred meter water resistance uh, watch that was uh, made in the late 50s to early 60s. Uh, I would say that this is a friendship watch because um, uh, this was a collector. It was a modern collector that uh, ended up becoming friends because of this watch. Um, this watch is actually given... So you met him through the yes, watch? Yes, I met him through the watch. Oh, and, uh, another amazing and, yeah, thing it's, to it's do. It's really amazing. Yeah. And I met him through the watch, we connected and uh, we really liked each other and uh, we, we had a lot of fun, you know, talking about watches and everything. And, and this was um, part of a, um, a drawer, you know, like a bunch of watches that that left, left for him. <laughs> and it's funny because um, this was the only genuine watch. The rest of the other watches in the bunch have Batiks is pretty much all fakes. No so he, way. yeah, he thought that this watch was fake, and he wanted to throw it away. He wanted to throw it away, which, but he did the right thing and sent me every single watch because I asked for it. He said, "Send me every single watch. I'll help you to you know authenticate to, of it away." Yeah. And this came up. It's working really well. Keeps great time. I wear it quite often. Honestly. Perfect example of a barn yeah. yarn find. Yeah. And Enjoying the restoration is also another yeah. nice mm -hmm. part. So talking about relationship, right? I think that we have a really special watch here, yeah. and it's deep as relationship goes. Maybe you want to tell me a bit more about this um, yes. this watch here. Yeah. Me and you are here today because of Wei, and yep. we both love Wei. Yes, we have so much love, passion, respect, and admiration for this guy. Mm -hmm. And I remember very, very, very good. This was Watches and Wonders two years ago. And I see Wei, I'm like, hey Wei, how are you? What's on your wrist? He's like, oh no, 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 it's under embargo. We cannot talk oh, about oh, it. Man. I'm like, okay, it's no funny. problem. What's on the other wrist? Mm. We see mm. what's on the other wrist. And then he's like, okay, I show you quickly. And then I look at it, but I didn't understand what it was. He was in yeah. a rush. I couldn't catch yeah, him. Yeah, it quite, it's quite confusing if you yeah. get it in the first time. Yeah. It's quite confusing. Yeah. And then funny enough, I'm having lunch with Alan Silberstein mm -hmm. and he's wearing the same watch. I'm like, oh, oh what's, what's happening something here? Something's happening, yeah. So I'm like, uh, Mr. Silberstein, mm -hmm. what is this watch that you're wearing? He's like, oh, I cannot talk about it. I'm like, yeah, but I, I saw it on Wei's dress too. He's like, oh, you saw it on Wei? Okay, come, I show you. And so he showed me the watch, you know, but he didn't explain what it was and I didn't know what was happening. And fast forward to a couple of days later, Grail Watch is mentioned. So Grail Watch is part of Wei's way of saying, I want to do beautiful collabs, yep. big collabs with two great people. So this one came with Ressens, with Benoit Mantiam, and with Alan Silberstein. Yeah. So, and what is this? It is the Carpe Diem watch. watch one. Carpe Diem watch, the Great Watch one. Yeah. So it's the OG, it's the first collab. Yes. Uh, great watchmaker, great product. Yep. Love the artist. Also, funny enough, because I discovered Alan Silberstein through MBNF. So ah, it's also okay. related through MBNF yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. Oh, they did have some collaborative yes, projects together. they did right? a couple yeah. of projects together. And so for me, yeah. this made perfect sense. And I look at this watch and it doesn't look like anything else. My God, it doesn't. Right. It's interesting, so, like so many, you know, graphics and uh, exactly. it's just different. Like exactly. any restaurants I've ever seen, yeah. this is cool. This yeah. is like unique. Absolutely. So again, no brainer, I had to have it. Awesome. <laughs> nice. Of course, continuing on yes. We gotta talk about this piece Absolutely. Here. So you just got this recently, right? I just got yeah. this recently. So tell me about so this. So this is an, also another perfect piece for me. Again, I mentioned earlier, if I can buy a watch that uh, someone is willing to sell, mm. I would I would jump on it. And so I'm, I'm here now, I'm in Singapore, and I'm like, wait, I'm gonna pop the question, not ask him for his hand in marriage, <laughs> but <laughs> wait, I would love to own one of your watches. Do you have anything? And he's like, oh, of course, let me think of something. And he comes the other day and he has this watch. Yeah. And this is extra special, first, of, first and foremost, because it was a gift. Mm -hmm. So it's very generous and kind yeah. of him. Second of all, this is a prototype that didn't go into yes, production. Yes, that's true. This so is a Baltic, uh, it's actually, a Baltic. it's a bi-compact chronograph exactly. that didn't happen, yep. basically, uh, for whatever reason. Yep. But, you know, it's a beautiful 7 So I have the prototype piece of a project that Wei was working mm -hmm. on and didn't go into production and I can probably say it belongs to me. It's amazing, my God. Right? I mean, congratulations, man. I, I remember this uh, faithfully, I think, uh, when, they are doing the, uh, when we are doing the Baltic project. Um, yeah. This was actually the, you know, the idea you know, uh, for, for, the, for the collab, but uh, you know, for whatever reasons, as I, as I mentioned, it didn't happen. But it's, it's nice to own something that's really special. It's a true one of one. Of one. one, of one. Yep. 
So kind, you know, we so kind. You know, Absolutely. He's one, the, he's one of the greatest human beings I actually ever met as well. Yep. So kind, you know, he's always a, he's, 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 he's an inspiring character, you know. You know, it, it's, it's very important because I would do, I would totally do something like that and I've done it before. So I always believe in karma, you know, so yep. once you do good, good will be returned onto you. Yep. And this is a perfect example, you know. Oh. It, it, it's nothing that it's major, you know, it's not a big complicated watch or something, but it's the gesture of it is so yeah. meaningful. And that's what it's about, man. Absolutely. Right? Let me take you back to your collection now. Okay. And we talk about another great piece, which is the 1680. Oh, yes, yes. I love vintage and I've been into the vintage curve. And I've been always drawn to the ghost bezel. Yep. I've loved ghost bezel. This one has a nice patina on the indexes. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell me more about this one? Oh, man. The 1680, where do I start? Um, this is a watch that I've been hunting for a long time. Yeah. Okay. Um, the 1680 to me, it's a it's, it's a very iconic um, Rolex. I would say within the vintage um, collection, I think the 1680 plays a very unique role mm -hmm. um, because of you know the glass, yeah. right? The top hat glass, the top hat plexi glass that comes with this curvature, you know, with this little, it looks like a hat, you know, with the cyclops, you know. Yeah. It's a very un it's a unique execution uh, for this particular reference only. And it was the first submariner with date, and Rolex end up doing something like this, you know, it's crazy. You know, the first time I saw it, maybe it's about 2016, 2017, early on. And uh, some, some, some guy uh, walked in and, you know, with a, a beautiful um, 1680, you know, a Ritz up, and it had that crazy dome glass. I was like, oh shit, what's that, you know? It does look crazy when you it's look like, at oh, it. You know, uh, you know, you know, back then, you know, all submarine looks like a sea dollar, you know? Right. And I was like, oh my God, what's that? Is that a sea dollar? You know, because back then, I didn't, didn't really know that much about 1680. And he was like, oh, no, bro, this is a 1680, you know, this is the first sub that comes with a date, and then we come with this top back glass. I'm like, oh, and it mesmerizes me. From that day on, I was always hunting for a 1680. I'm very, very proud to say I own six or seven 1680 since then. It's a white sub, you know, um, made for the very last few years of the, the 1680 um, life, lifespan. And it also comes, I like the monotonous look with mm -hmm. the uh, full white handwriting mm -hmm. on the cream down. I think mm -hmm. that's just amazing. And I, I would actually prefer the white sub more than the red sub. I know that many people say the red sub is more collectible, which yeah. I have one of them as well. It's subjective. It's just that, you know, the white sub is just, the, to me, the, ult the ultimate um, ultimate um, tool watch. Yeah. You know, you know, I must commend you on the amount of research that you do to find these pieces, yeah. because looking at those, the condition is amazing. The hunt of these pieces, I, I, I can feel yeah. the amount of time and pain yeah, yeah. and happiness and all of those emotions come together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why don't we move to another piece that we don't often see? Yeah. This is like a hit and miss. Mm -hmm. People try to hype this product, corner the market with it, which is the bubble bag. Yes. And why don't you tell us more why you love this and why it's in your collection? Yeah, I mean, of course, the obvious answer is just look at it. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's amazing, right? And. Uh, I, I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a storyteller. I'm a bit of a narrative geek. You know, I, I love stories. Yeah. I, I think that um, end of the day, uh, which vintage collector doesn't love stories because sure. that's the only thing that connects us with the pieces, Absolutely. right? And uh, the bubble bag to me, it's the pinnacle of um, what Rolex is. You know, during the '30s when they introduced the perpetual winding mm -hmm. movement. And you know the transitioning from just oysters to the oyster perpetual, you know, in in in, in the late twenties, early thirties, and they created a new case like this, putting in a you know amazing amazing movement. The eagle, I'm not gonna go deep into it, but it's the A two nine five movement, uh, and 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 result in a very thick movement with a huge modular rotor, and hence the bubble bag name because yeah. you know the butt, you know, you gotta protrude the butt out like Nicki Minaj, you know, <laughs> and in order to fit the movement. And I think that that is a, a, a really amazing design language. I agree. And back then, and it was like the 30s and 40s, it's insane, you know. Yep. And this example was actually, I, I would I would explain this bubble bag as a little bit like um, throwing a little bit like my dirty secrets or like a, a little bit like uh, bad habits mm. because it's, um, I love collecting heirlooms. Nice. Yeah. Um, nice. Yeah. I, I mean, many people have you know, different opinions on it, but yeah. I love collecting heirlooms. I love to buy watches that are, that is passed down from uh, from generations to generations, but to a certain point that the current owner doesn't really appreciate the watches. And uh, I have opportunity to meet with a lot of people like that, and this happens to be one of them. So I must I, say, I, for I a watch that is going to be 80 years old in a couple of years, this looks yeah. fantastic. I mean, I, I wish I, I would look like this when I'm 80. <laughs> I gotta agree, I gotta agree. 
So let's jump into uh, the final two watches that you have. Yes. Uh, that's uh, to me pretty amazing as right. well. The two Timex second second, right? Yes. So maybe you want to tell me more. Well, let's start with the Pepsi first. Get the Pepsi sure. is actually more popular, I think. So yeah. I mean, the Timex is just fun, and for me, I, I don't discriminate when mm. it comes to watches. Mm. I, I truly love them, no matter what the price mm. is, shape, size, form. Yeah. It doesn't matter, you know. And Timex also reminds me of my childhood. Mm. I had a couple of fun Timex and Casios, you know, the remote control one, or uh, there was one also the calculator one, yep. the very famous. Mm -hmm. So I love to buy these. And the story of this one is, at some point, there's this artist that comes to the scene and he's changing second hand. Mm. He's customizing watches, taking the original hand and putting a custom hand. And it was fascinating and he yeah. was doing it on Rolexes and Omegas and I'm like wow that's a nice story you know if you come up with a nice idea that you want to put on your watch it's nice so his name is Romaric and mm -hmm. uh, we've been chatting back and forth and I remember at that time I bought the Timex and everybody was doing Rolexes and I didn't have any Rolex to yeah. work on so I reached out to Romaric and I said Hey, would you do like a Timex? Yeah. Would be interesting for you. <laughs> and he loved the idea and he's like, yeah, I have this idea in my mind, that idea in my mind. Nothing related to what he did with mm. this project, but we talk about different. We were playing on the word Timex, Rolex. So he's very creative and I love yeah. what he does. I can see that. Yeah, but it never happened. But another uh, testament to kind people and nice people, you know. So finally he ended up working mm -hmm. with Timex and he did this collab. And he reached out to me, he's like, you know, Omar, we never picked up our project, but I'm doing collaboration with Timex. I would love for you to have one. Oh man, that's nice. And it's amazing, right? And so this one is very nice because it's a Pepsi. Obviously, yeah. you can see the fun part of it. It's yeah, a straw. Yeah, it's a straw, yeah. yeah. In the second hand, it's so, amazing. Yeah, it's a Timex Q model, right? It's a Timex Q. Yeah, Timex really, Q, really popular. Yes, integrated bracelet. very popular with an integrated mm. mesh bracelet, yeah. which is also very nice. Mm. And so, you know, it made sense also to... And this is cool. <laughs> I like that this has a slap, you know? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> so for me, you know, I, I, I bought the Q with the blue and the red mm -hmm. because I never had the Pepsi. Okay. Uh, GMT was my first Rolex and I had different variation, mm -hmm. never the Pepsi. Cool. So I bought it in the Q. It's nice, yeah. It's because I wanted mm -hmm. the red and the blue. But my love for, for, for uh, the perfect GMT before the recent one I got was the Batman. Yep, the the black, black and blue, yep, blue the combination GMT, yeah. was so nice. And Batman is my favorite character from uh, oh, really? DC Comics. Oh, yes. that's cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Bruce Wayne, Batman is, is Me too. somebody I, like, I, like I grew Batman up watching. Well, yeah. So this one is so cool because this one is, there's this famous meme where Batman is slapping yeah, his yeah, yeah, the Robin, Robin, right? Like, <coughs> so, and then Romerick said, okay, yeah. we'll put slap ah, there, okay. you know, so it's yeah, just Yeah, David, you gotta put the meme for this, the slap, yeah. the Batman slap yeah. Robin meme. So it's just a fun watch, you know, <laughs> and this one has a nice uh, also complication to it. It's the day and the date. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it just yeah, makes it's nice. Sense. It's fun, yeah. and that's, sometimes you get you know watches like that. That's uh, right. that's that's not like you know it's not always about you know prestige and all that. It's sometimes True. it's just about fun. It's just having fun, yeah. right? And, and everything's like that. Yeah, and I have to to give credit also to Ken from the Lugs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of course. I'm obsessed with green. I have to have <laughs> green on all of my watches. And Ken came up with this beautiful uh, rubber strap with this nice yeah, deployment. This is the CTS, uh, like how to size a yes, rubber strap. Yep. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So Ken, thank you very much for allowing me to wear those fun pieces on rubber strap. Yeah, so basically, you know, uh, this is it guys. Uh, we're gonna end off uh, this contactless perspective. You know, I wanna thank uh, my Habibi, Omar. I want to say yeah. something, it's so yeah. funny how we're ending it. We're <laughs> yeah, ending we're actually... A young guy <laughs> that loves old watches with a semi-old guy that loves modern watches. Nah, that's fine. Watches, and we have... Watches yeah. you know, transcends yeah. age and transcends style. It's exactly. style. Exactly. It's just style. Exactly. You know? that's just what, right. There's no boundaries to yeah. it, you know? Just buy what you love. People yeah. say it as a cliche, but it's so true. It's so true. Honestly, yeah. it's so true. And I love that you're wearing this one. And, probably <laughs> and I love that you're wearing exactly. this one. Anyway, thanks Omar. Thank you. It's great having you, man. See you. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you.